All right, here we go. Wednesday lecture hump day. Isolation, isolation day 30. These uh, memes have been going around. They're pretty funny. <laughs> I think this one got, they got a, uh, they got bonus points for the no November to December, January, what, January, February, February, March, mustache, mustache, March, April. Yeah, I think you should just shave by then, maybe. Um, so we'll finish chapter 19 and we'll start chapter 20 today. 19 is acids, 20 is acid derivatives. Here's our schedule. So we're getting towards the end here, huh? We got uh, exam three coming up next week. I didn't even realize until making this outline. And uh, so exam three next week, I looked it over. Uh, the folks will be on the chapter 19 through 20. So we had a little bit of chapter, I mean, not 19 through 20. Focus will be on chapter 16 to 19. We had a little bit of chapter 16 on the last exam, but we'll have, it's not most of it, so that whole orthopara directing and all that. And uh, due dates. I want to help you out. I'm going to give you a little tough love, tough, tough love, love. And so I'll be filming and collecting lab data this week. And then when I, so I want you to finish up the old experiments. So all the old experiments on the books that you haven't turned in, that you have data for, we because uh, I put up data for you guys, let's just get them out of the way. So old experiments turned in after next Monday. If not, then, uh, so I want to try to get stuff done this week and then turn them into me next Monday or I'll, tough love, I'll take a point away from your score. If it's not by Tuesday, tough love, two points. Maybe I hadn't realized the exam was on Wednesday next week. Maybe I'll, I might be nice, but we'll see. Try to get these done this week. And then here we go, right, etc. And homework due dates too. Turn in all the old homeworks as well. Homework A through E are what I consider old. The new homeworks, uh, and we'll get late fees too. Uh, the new homeworks are chapter 17 and 18. So you should be able to do 17 now because we finished that chapter Monday. And 18, let's try to get those to me next week. Um, yeah. And then I'll put up chapter 19 homework as well. Uh, and then uh, oh, I found this al online. You maybe have heard of it. It's pretty cool. Bunch of artists uh, singing on this YouTube uh, video, and you can like skip songs if you want. I think there's 68 different songs played by artists around the world in their houses and things. So it's pretty nice, pretty neat to see. So if you want a little study music? Check it out. Okay, let's review this one again really quick. Um, when we have alpha, beta, unsaturated ketones or aldehydes. So there's our, we have our carbon here, we have an alpha and a beta carbon. Well, actually, this is what we're getting here. So the first one is a carbonyl carbon. Next one's the alpha carbon. Next one's the beta carbon. And nucleophiles will add to different spots. The lithium adds primarily to the carbonyl carbon, which we call a 1-2 addition. Crignards can add 1-2 and 1-4, so they're not very selective. And then cuprates uh, add primarily 1,4, so that's good. If you want to add a carbon bond to the beta carbon, use the cuprate. If you want to add it to the carbonyl, use the lithium. And if for some reason you wanted to add to both, you'd use the grignard. And you'll notice, uh, I think I forgot to point this out last time, I didn't put an arrowhead on this because this is a radical mechanism, so I'm just showing where it goes. We didn't learn the mechanism for that addition. We just learned that there would be an enolate after the carbon's added, and then it can be protonated or alkylated. All right, what about the enolate here? That one, put the road change on there. It adds one, um, four as well. And the amine does too. Most things add one, four. And we've seen this add one, four in the Robinson emulation. Okay, and now a must click through. I'm excited about this. I would say Gottfried was the one who inspired me about this aldol condensation and Sir Robinson annulation cheats. I, uh, I, have, I made it up as a separate um, Google slide, so go to and check that out. I'll link it. I linked it under our mechanism quizzes, and here's the link in this outline as well. So let me go to that real quick. It's right here. Boom. So let's see if you like it. So we got aldol condensation, overall reaction, cheat codes. That's right. We have, a, uh, I forget what the term of that is, <laughs> amesis and something. We'll see. So if you have an aldehyde and you're doing an aldol condensation with the base and the alcohol, heat, remove water, your cheats can do this. You can put the, this is the wall hack. Boom, you bring in your other, you bring in an aldehyde under the alpha carbon. Use aim assist, there it is. And then 
bam, it shows you how to get your product. Isn't that cool? So there it is. That's the, the cheat code to making the final product for an uh, Aldol condensation. And, uh, and then you're in God mode. Uh, bonus feature, if you buy now, uh, you can see that before the uh, alkene is made, initially an intermediate here is the Aldol adduct that gets dehydrated. Oh, that, that menu's annoying. And then um, also, uh, the, you'll get both the E, E now, and the Z, E now. So what we're referring to there is the carbon alkene here. That's the highest priority, and that's the highest priority. So they are currently not on the same side. So that's the E, E now. And it's called an E now because it has an alkene and an aldehyde, E now. If it was a ketone, it would be, be a ketal. I mean, an uh, E known. <laughs> All right, and then the Z, you can see the, the two higher priorities are on Z, same side, and I'm representing it as just a wiggle, both of them. Uh, all right, so the E, Z, E now. Moving on, uh, we got some more practice for you if you buy this pack, free pack for CSGO. So uh, here we go, the wall hack. Drop it right under the alpha carbon. Use your aim assist. Bam, there's our product. And if you buy now, you can get the uh, booster pack. It'll increase your drop rate, get more loot, and you'll get the carbon number assist. So watch this guy. Boom. See carbon one right here just dropped in. There it is. And then you can number two, three, four, and then check it on the product side. There's carbon one right here. Two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four. It looks like we're good, right? And now uh, we have another example here of our cheat codes. Be the MOBA carrier you're meant to be. Here it is. Bam. Oh, this is the, uh, sorry, this is a retrosynthesis cheat codes. So look at that. You can cut right through the alkene and put your aldehydes like that. Bam. Got it. Let's try another one. Be the highest DPS warrior. DPS is damage per second. I had to look that one up. All right, so here we go. Boom, cutting in half right there. And look at the products. That's nice, huh? That was a mixed aldol. <clears throat> this mixed aldol should work pretty good because this guy is a <clears throat> the enolate. This guy cannot be the enolate. This is a better uh, electrophile than this one because that's an sp2 carbon electron withdrawing from it. That's an sp3 donating. So probably get a pretty good yield there. Here's another one for Rainbow Six Siege. The wall hack. Drop it in. Oh, wait. I did it out of order, huh? Oh, that's okay. So uh, here we go. Carbon number assist comes into play here. There's my number one up here I'm counting. Two, three, one. There's my other number one if you didn't see a drop. Two, three, one, two, three. All right, we look good. And now for the Robinson annulation. Overall reaction, cheat codes. Buy now, how much would you pay for that? Don't answer. You'll also get, get the sicko mode. Here's your cheats. Red Knight's coming in, boom. We got our aim assist, bam. Hitbox inflator. You see that one there? That's the hitbox inflator. So we got aim assist there. That's the aldol connotation. And then we got a, this enolate is going to add to the beta carbon 1,4 addition. Boom. There's our product right there. Look at that, huh? And it comes with the number assist also for the Robinson annulation overall reaction. So there's our number one just dropped down. Spinning that so you can see it better. Two, three, four, five, six. And then here, let's check. One, two. Two, three, four, five, six. Looks good. And then uh, there's our product. And this, so this is the Sir Robinson Night Mode. There he is. And uh, yeah, these these codes work so good. They get ninja triggered. You kiss your, you you kiss your mother's you kiss your mother with that mouth. That that's not good. And then uh, here we got another example. Sir Robinson English Night Mode. He's looking serious in this one. He's ready. And then here's the cheats. We throw the aldehyde below the uh, alpha beta unsaturated ketone. Use aim assist there. So you see the aldol. And uh, that's right. Use the hitbox inflator. 
Bam. There we go. Carbon number assist. Be a good Deadpool. Count your carbons. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. And then here's the other one. Spin it. Two, three, four, five, six. And you can see like alpha carbon six and five. I should have methyls. There they are. Carbon four, I have an isopropyl. There it is. Carbon two, I have a methyl. There it is. So, boom, looking good, huh? And then uh, let's do another retro. Oh, we haven't done the retro cheat codes for. Did we do one already? I think I got these slides out of order. Whatever. I'll fix it afterwards. So here's the cheats for the retro. Boom, look at this. We're going Overwatch. Rel uh, stop relying on cheese comp. There we go. Best aim bot for your Bitcoin. There it is. You just chop through there, the aldol condensation part. And then you chop through here. That's the conjugate addition part of that one right there. So let's let's count those though. Let's use the number, <clears throat> carbon number assist. So there's carbon one right there. Two, three, four, five, six. And let's see that we got it right over here. One, two, three, four. Five, six, boom. Now let's try another one. Oh, we're going Minecraft. We're gonna cleave there. End Enderman. He's gonna be pissed. And then we got the uh, classic Steve here cutting that conjugate addition bond. And there we go. I think we got it. Oh, carbon number assist will double check though for us. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Five, six, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. Looks good. Four out of five Steve's use our codes. So uh, you can see uh, carbon five has two methyls, and it, that's the two methyls. Six, uh, off of four, you have a methyl. Off of two, you've got a terbutyl. Looking good, right? Okay, I hope you like it. So now we're going to get back to uh, chapter 19. We're going to learn how to draw the overall reaction for an acid carboxylic acid to an acid chloride with thionyl chloride. We learned in the past how to make use thionyl chloride to make alcohols into acids, I mean into chlorides. And then we're going to do some diacid cyclic anhydride synthesis and a few others. We'll be done with 19 and then we'll start on 20, some carboxylic acid derivatives. Next up, we're making acids into acid chlorides. So, start with, say, propionoic acid. And you want to make it into the acid chloride, you add thionyl chloride. And you can do it neat. Thionyl chloride is a liquid, but usually you'll dilute it with, uh, you'll have a solvent like methylene chloride. This will make, oh, not that. This will make your acid chloride. And the acid chloride is a very strong electrophile. The acid's a weak electrophile, the acid chloride is very strong. <clears throat> Makes sense too, because we know oxygens donate through resonance, withdraw through induction, but overall are electron donors, making the carbon and carbon less positive. Whereas the chlorine donates through resonance, but weakly because it has a 3p orbital and it doesn't match up well with carbon's 2p orbital. Weak resonance donation, strong electron withdrawing through induction, overall withdrawing. So this carbonyl is more positive for the chloride than the alcohol, I mean, than the acid. So that's why <clears throat> acid chloride is very useful. And it's nice to know how to make them, because now that you can make them, you can you know, add them to a benzene ring, right? With a aluminum chloride, Friedel Craft acylation, right? So I sh probably should teach this during that chapter, but whatever. Um, let's do the mechanism. Okay, so for a carboxylic acid, it's going to first add to the thionyl chloride, but what oxygen should I add to the thionyl chloride? Should I add with the OH oxygen or the carbonyl oxygen? 
it sort of intuitively feels like it should be the OH oxygen, but if you remember, we said when you have a situation like this, what is more nucleophilic, what's more basic? It's the double bonded one. That's more nucleophilic, more basic. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have that add into the uh, chloride. And when it does that, it generates an intermediate that has resonance. That's why it will add with that oxygen instead of the other oxygen. And uh, this one will, um, I'll show you the resonance. It could resonate from that lower oxygen. From here. Like so. Oh, you know, I might as well throw this on. Sulfur actually has a lone pair in this. Interesting. <clears throat> Okay, uh, and then the next step of the mechanism is the sulfur. It's, a, it's an addition to the sulfur and then an immediate elimination. Does this sulfur have a good leaving group? Yes. As these chlorides. Chlorides are good leaving groups. They come off as weak bases. We're going to see a lot of addition elimination mechanisms. when that chloride comes off, it can add now to the carbonyl of the acid, because you know you need to get a chlorine on there, right? It's a, it's a push pull, and it's really interesting. I like this step, it kind of like explodes. I'm going to draw it over to this way. It's going to go all the way over to this board over here. Sorry about the inconvenience of the boards, but uh, this step's cool. <clears throat> you can see a lone pair from that oxygen of the alcohol dropping down, and then this bond swinging over to make a double bond to the sulfur, at the same time popping off the chloride. Kind of a crazy step. It's like an explosion. And I'm drawing it up. Uh, you'll see with the full arrow, fuse the equilibrium arrow, it's okay. But I think of it as a full arrow. The reason why is when the sulfur comes off, the sulfur dioxide, that's a gas, and that can bubble out of the solution and be lost. And then at this point, um, you just need to deprotonate it. And I know chloride is not a strong acid, but in this case, it'll work pretty good because this is such a strong acid. I mean, I know chloride is not a strong base, but this is a very strong acid, and if it deprotonates it, it creates another gas, HCl gas. And so that can bubble out a solution as well. 
So even if this is a weak base and it just every once in a while makes HCl gas, it bubbles out of solution, by the Schottler's principle, drives the reaction that way. So these reactions create two gases, and uh, this is a smog, that's a very corrosive gas, so acidic, so you don't want to do this one out in the bench top, you want to do this one in the fume hood. Uh, we're going to see these concepts a lot though. <clears throat> I'm using the double bonded atom with the lone pair as the nucleophile, not the other one. If you, if you want, draw this attacking there and see that you don't get a, an intermediate with resonance. And then uh, we get, this is an addition to the sulfur and then an elimination where the chloride comes off and then we get a strong electrophile, addition, push, pull, and then this thing kind of just explodes. Another thing I like about this is if you have a reaction in which you make one molecule into one, two, three, then uh, it's very favored by entropy. There's a lot of disorder in three molecules versus one. So that's really driving this reaction as well. Our next outcome is uh, how to make cyclic anhydrides. Um, the anhydride reaction I'm going to go over is a cyclic one, but you should be able to easily then do non-cyclic ones. I'll talk to you about it after this one. So an anhydride involves two carboxylic acids coming together and removing a water molecule. So what happens in this case is we're going to get a one, two, three, four, five, six membered ring on this one. We're going to get an anhydride that looks like this. And you produce water, and if you remove that, then you can really drive the reaction forward. So minus H2O. So you just got to heat up a diacid like this and it'll create an anhydride. This is your anhydride. Okay, anhydrides we're going to see, they're, uh, they're more electrophilic than acids, but not as electrophilic as acid chlorides, but close. They're like a mild acid chloride. <clears throat> okay, let's do the mechanism for this one. So in this mechanism, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a generic carboxylic acid, because this carboxylic acid is uh, present in a, in a great amount, right? There'd be millions and millions of these. So we can have one of them just generically represent, represented with that, an R like that. And that can be our acid that uh, can protonate and be a proton shuttle. Okay, so I need to have one of the alcohols or carbonyls, actually one of the carbonyls, not the alcohols, add to a carbonyl carbon. Um, but is this a strong or a weak nucleophile, would you think? It's a pretty weak nucleophile. That's a weak nucleophile. What do you think about my carbonyl there? Is that a carbonyl carbon strong or weak electrophile? It's a weak electrophile. So they aren't going to react as the, in the state that they're in. But we're under acidic conditions, so what do we usually want under acidic conditions? Positive charge, protonate first. So yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll protonate the, what's going to wind up being the um, electrophile to make it stronger. So let me draw up one of these guys. I'll, I guess I'll draw it up the way I got it over there. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's right here. Okay, so I'm gonna protonate this carbonyl. This reaction is not very product favored because it's a, when it's protonated, it's a stronger acid than carboxylic acid. But as long as it happens a little bit, it will uh, lead us to a point where we'll produce water and if we remove the water, we take everything towards the product side with the, by the Chatelier's principle. Okay. There we go. Okay, so now we have a 
weak, nu weak uh, nucleophile still, but now this guy is a strong electrophile. Comes with a positive charge there. Concepts we've seen over and over. <clears throat> How should I draw the mechanism? Should I draw this oxygen being the nucleophilic oxygen adding? Or should I draw the double bonded oxygen being nucleophilic and adding? The double bonded. That's the more nucleophilic, more basic, like we saw in the last reaction. So we add into there. And uh, we'll have a two OHs on that carbon. And this is going to look kind of strange initially, but it'll get better. What do you think? Let me make sure I number this right. Let me see. make sure I did the atoms right. One, two. I'll use my uh, number assist. Three, four, five, six. So one, two, three. Four, five, six. Did I do that right? Six should have two alcohols. One's attached, two has an OH. Yeah, this looks good. All right, and then what I need to do is deprotonate this guy, make one of these a good leaving group so they can get kicked off. And uh, I can do it in any order, really. I think, actually, no, I should deprotonate this first. So uh, let's use our. Um, our proton transfer from before to do that. So we got our acetate here can come along. And when I deprotonate this, watch how I'll do it. I'll swing this down there to make a pi bond and then push that pi bond up onto that oxygen. So I'll get my two lone pairs on that oxygen. acid again. Okay, now I've uh, kind of finished the left half of it. I just need to take these. This kind of looks like a hydrate, huh? It's, uh, but it's not called a hydrate in this case, but it's like that. So I got to like go through a mechanism to make that into a, an anhydride. So let's do that on the other board. Now I've been going over a lot of mechanisms lately, but I'm hoping you see the patterns in all of them and you don't feel like you're just memorizing them, that you're actually just deriving them each time. Just taking your time, looking what you got, and uh, saying things like, oh yeah, that's a bad leaving group, let's make it a good leaving group. Push, pull, all the rest. Okay, so I got a, these are both bad leaving groups. So I'm going to protonate one of them. There's my generic one of the diacids. And then you'll see we're almost done. Once this is protonated, I create a stereocenter. So I'll wiggle one of the bonds because this could have protonated this one or that one. Okay, and then uh, I've got a good leaving group. I've got a lone pair on this oxygen. It's going to be an elimination push pull. Huh? Just about done. Oh, and then at this point too, you'll see we've made water, which is a great thing for us because then we can just remove it to draw the reaction to the 
side we want. There we go. So we're going to remove that water and that will help us get a good yield. Uh, finally, we just needed to protonate that. So what's going to be our base? The acetate again. You'll see it's catalytic. It was used up initially, reformed, used up, reformed. So you theoretically, if you have a solution of like billions and billions of these, uh, you might not be able to react with one of the billions. So you are in the notice it. There we have it, our cyclic anhydride and uh, our carboxylic acid regenerated. We can make anhydrides. So let me give you a doyo. So that one, I'll give you two of them, two doyos. So that one was a six membered ring. These also work well as five membered rings. So for a five membered ring, you just have count from the carbonyl oxygen say one two three four five that needs to be my carbonyl so that'd be one two three four five yep so if I heat this up and I remove water give me my product plus the MAC I got another one for you too. Let's do a linear one. If you take, say, a carboxylic acid like this, heat it up, remove water, what you get is the anhydride side. I'm running out of room on the board. That looks like that. And then plus water and you remove it. So you see how I have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I think the mechanism for the linear one is easier. Um, that's why I wanted to do the, the cyclic one for you. So for the mechanism to do you that one. And uh, when you're going through the mechanisms, think about all the things I'm saying about, oh, it's a weak nucleophile, Weak electrophile, I mean, and now it's a strong electrophile. Think of those concepts, and it'll make this a lot more enjoyable and easier to learn. And um, also, I forgot to say in the beginning, start coming to the uh, Zoom office hours if you're not, because the people who are, I feel like they're getting like such an advantage. They're really getting to do stuff right in front of me, and then getting me to find like, oh, they're a little weak on that. Let me give them another example like that, and they come out of it making the class a lot easier to learn. They learn the material much quicker than if you just do it on your own. Now to finish off chapter 19, the acid chapter, we're going to do one more outcome which has four different reactions on with them. Um, and they all involve uh, addition, elimination mechanisms. We've already seen a lot of this and we're gonna see more of it and I'm just gonna, it's gonna make you stronger and stronger with this. So for example, outcome 10A, in our outcomes it says we can react a carboxylic acid with an acid chloride to make an anhydride. So let's look at an example like that. So we can use an acid, say, that has a benzene ring on it. Let's do benzoic acid. And then our acid chloride could be something different. It doesn't have to be benzoic acid. So let's say we go with a three carbon acid chloride. I think that's the one we did at the start of today's lecture, if I'm remembering right. Okay, and what you do is you add a, just reactive, because the uh, acid chloride is a strong acid. Um, you could add a, a proton sponge 
So I'm going to say a proton sponge like a good one is Huni's base. It's diisopropyl ethyl amine. So I'm going to actually mention if you added that or not. So this is a uh, proton sponge. Could react with or without. Either way, I'll show you where it changes. And then this is a uh, this proton is a tertiary amine. You want a tertiary amine, and I'll explain why as we go. Um, this is a common one, and when you do this, you get the mixed anhydride. So before when we did anhydride synthesis, we had the cyclic anhydride or the linear ones and they were symmetric about the middle. This one's not symmetric, huh? And um, on this, besides this, you'll either get HCl gas if you do not have proton sponge, but if you have the proton sponge added in there, you'll get the salt. Like that. Okay, so let's do the mechanism. So when you're looking at the benzoic acid and the acid chloride, one of them is going to be a nucleophile, and one's going to be an electrophile. Which one looks more electrophilic? The acid chloride or the benzoic acid? Remember, they both have carbonyls to be electrophiles. The oxygen is overall electron donating. The chloride is overall electron withdrawing. So, which one's the stronger electrophile? The acid chloride is a much stronger electrophile. That's a strong electrophile. So the acid, the carboxylic acid will need to be the nucleophile. Is it a strong or weak nucleophile? What would you guess? It's a weak nucleophile. Can they react still? Yes. If because this is so strong as a as an electrophile. All right, so we've got a weak nucleophile, a strong electrophile. My nucleophile, it's got some lone pairs on the double bonded oxygen or on the single bonded oxygen. Which ones are more nucleophilic? The double bonded oxygen ones. So they will add first to the carbonyl. And I said this was going to be an addition elimination mechanism. Here's our addition step. This, at this point, the mechanism, it should look a little strange to you to have an O minus and an O plus, but I believe this is what happens because it's such a strong electrophile. Okay, so I have my addition step, and then after my addition step, what do you think is going to happen next? Elimination. So you add it to the carbonyl, breaks the pi bond up, and now can that pi bond drop back down and kick off a leaving group? It can. And uh, what do you think the best leaving group would be? Chloride. Well, it can break that off too. It can go back, but if it kicks off the chloride, it'll go towards the product side.
now we are actually much closer to being done than you might think because of the resonance involved with this guy. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and just draw it. So for this guy, it's got resonance like this. Which I'm gonna kind of flip it around a little bit on you. Uh, hope this is gonna be okay with you. If you're not sure about it, pause the video and number your carbons. So what I did there was I put the this oxygen right here is that one. Now that's gonna be the middle one. Okay. Uh, oh, I forgot my positive charge here. Now, to finish off the reaction, you can see all I need to do is deprotonate that one. If there's no proton sponge, then this can deprotonate and generate HCl. This is when there's no proton sponge. But if you have a proton sponge in the reaction, like the CUNY's base there, the diisopropyl ethylamine, tertiary amine, then it could actually be the thing to deprotonate. Because it's a much stronger base than chloride. Just the same thing though, huh? Okay, so that's, uh, that happens with the proton sponge. Um, okay, why did I pick a tertiary amine? The reason why I did that is if a tertiary amine, say, wants to add to the carbonyl of the acid chloride, which it will, it's, it can't stay on there. Let me draw it over here to the side. If you have the acid chloride, but it can only temporarily stay on there. So then you have my uh, tertiary amine come in. Addition. This, after the addition, you people talk about this as the uh, um, tetrahedral intermediate is the term you use. Okay, so if the tertiary amine comes on, it gets a positive charge, but can it, and can it lose that positive charge while it's attached? If it has no hydrogens, it can't. You could get elimination though. I mean, this could happen. This can come on and then come off. They're both good leaving groups at this point. Let's say the chloride does come off. Let's see if that's a problem. The chloride's the one to come off, then brings us over here. That's our elimination step.
Is that such a bad thing? No, because this here is still a good leaving group. There is more steric hindrance, and the steric hindrance actually slows down the attack initially as well. But it's a good leaving group, so the, if I have that nitrogen with a positive charge, it can just be here like the chloride, and the acid can still add to it. Oh, and then also, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if this is too complicated for you, just leave off the abuse. Just say, oh yeah, I'll heat these guys up, make my hand right. Before I start the next one, I'm going to do something I was planning on doing before the last one, but no big deal. I'm going to do more, of, I'm going to do a generic addition elimination. So, what happens in an addition elimination is you have some leaving group on a carbonyl, and then uh, you have a nucleophile that adds. get your addition first, hence the name, right? And then this is uh, what we'll refer to as the tetrahedral intermediate, because the carbonyl carbon was trigonal planar, it becomes tetrahedral. Then you get, uh, sometimes it doesn't go right to elimination, so the elimination is going to be next. Occasionally you'll need, uh, before this in here, you have some proton transfers. We didn't see that in the uh, last one where we used a carboxylic acid and an acid chloride. But you might need some proton transfers. Oh, you might need some proton transfers here before the addition as well. Uh, but eventually you get elimination and the uh, leading group leaves in your elimination step. It's good to see, kind of look for this pattern because you're going to see it over and over and it'll help you <clears throat> derive these reactions. So the next one we're doing is to react, oh, this is one that we've done a lot. We're going to react a carboxylic acid with uh, a alcohol to make an ester. We did this to make a banana oil. Um, that was it, actually. We were going to do an unknown ester. Maybe I took that one out. It's kind of repetitive, but we've done this one in lab. So let's do it. Let's do it again. What kind of carboxylic acid do you want to use? Maybe a 3,4 carbon acid. Four? Okay. Let's go one, two, three, four. We'll use this acid. And then what kind of alcohol do you want to add to it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, one? Okay. We'll go methanol. And then remember when we made banana oil, we added acid and we heated it up. Let's do that. Uh, we use sulfuric acid. Yeah, might as well use it again. Could use tosic acid, something like that, right? Heat. And uh, what you produce is the ether, es the ester, the methyl ester in this case. And uh, you'll also get hydrogen sulfate and water that gets protonated. So it's sort of like the water is removed by it being protonated. That's if you have enough acid, if you have an equivalent of acid, but you don't even need an equivalent of acid. Okay, so let's do the mechanism for this one. You did the mechanism for this type of reaction on a pre-lab for the banana oil. And you probably just, you know, just followed along then, but now you're going to have a lot more insight into it. So let's work it out together. Uh, what do you think happens first? Methanol gets protonated, right? Because methanol is the solvent and the reactant. It's going to react with the sulfuric acid. 
because it's a sulfuric acid, it's such a strong acid. Here, let's see if this spells out anything. That's a protonation. And that hydrogen sulfate is pretty much done. It's not a strong base and not much more for it to do. Okay, so our carboxylic acid, is it a strong acid or a, I mean, is it a strong electrophile or a weak electrophile? It's a weak electrophile. So, and then what kind of a nucleophile are we going to use? We're going to use the methanol, huh? Is the methanol a strong nucleophile or a weak nucleophile? Weak nucleophile. So, we need to make this guy stronger. We'll use the uh, acid in solution, the protonated methanol. So, we protonate twice again. Up. And then we wind up with uh, our acid. Oh, and then I didn't even make a big deal about it this time, but notice how I put Don't! the carbonyl oxygen. Double bonded oxygen, not this one. It's more basic. Okay, next up, uh, I've got a, now I've got a strong uh, electrophile, so what can happen? Even with a, a weak nucleophile, I can add. So I've had some, in this one I've had some, uh, some proton transfers here, huh? Before the addition. nucleophile methanol could add into the carbonyl. There we go. And, oh, I didn't do that right. When it adds, it still has a hydrogen on it. So I'm going to have an elimination step next, because this is an additional elimination mechanism. But my best leaving group right now is the methanol. I don't want that to eliminate. I want the, the alcohol to eliminate, huh? the OH. So I need a proton transfer to transfer a proton from the methanol side to the OH side. What's that going to be? More methanol. So, I haven't been spelling it out, have I? That was the, oh, I did do the addition, the protonation. So we're, hepa, hep, no, this is deprotonate, huh? We're referring to this guy. Hepad, side needs to be made into a good leaving group. Protonate again. So now the pad. Puh. We've been doing a lot of mechanisms lately, but as long as you're practicing them, you're going to do great on exam three and the final probably. Hopefully you're seeing that as I'm teaching these, I set them up really carefully so that they're all related and not so disconnected that you have to just memorize a billion reaction mechanisms, but just a few concepts. All right, so now I've got a good leaving group. Oh, and I want that water to leave, and it's really set up well for it because I can do that. You know what? I'm missing a lot here, aren't I? 
Yeah. Woo. Sorry. You guys are probably going crazy watching this video tomorrow. Sorry, this guy's got an OH. And his OH. I would refilm it, but it's a bit late. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, okay, there we go. So now I'm going. Uh, so if that's got an OH, then I'll fix this too. No wiggle here. No wiggle there. No wiggle there. All right, there. Oh, wiggle there. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. All right, here we go. So we got the good leading group. Let's eliminate. Oh, you know what? I don't like the way I eliminated that. That was pretty lame. Let's just keep going. This mechanism, the whole thing's been a little bit lame, but there's a lot of learning going on here. A lot of learning, a lot of room for growth. Areas for growth opportunities. Yeah, so I got my water came off. There's enough, enough that I'll sit around and it'll be protonated. And now this doesn't look like the product that much, but you can see it's just a resonance structure of uh, something that's almost completely done, huh? could happen with the water. It could happen also with another acid, uh, carboxylic acid. Um, any of it's fine. I'll go ahead and use the water since it's there. And there we go. I wonder what this one would smell like. These esters tend to have smells like the uh, banana oil you made. Which I actually, I'm going into lab on Thursday to clean out lockers or get it started with the stop group. It'll be interesting to see what's in those lockers. Don't worry, I won't tell anybody. Uh, that's it, right? Yeah, and I wonder what this one smells like. Can look it up, see if it has a good smell. It might be in like raspberries or something, I don't know. Kind of small though, might not have much of this, might not be in nature much. I don't, I have no idea. Now to make an amide from a carboxylic acid. So let's pick something interesting, maybe a isopropyl acid. I don't know if I've already used that one. I think I have, huh? yeah, that's right. Okay, so for these you add an amine and the amine has to be ammonia, primary, or secondary. Tertiary won't work. Let's go with the primary. I'll go with ethylamine. You heat this up and you remove water. That'll really help you. And you'll be able to make your uh, amide. It'll look like this. Okay, so let's go through the mechanism. This one, uh, you do need heat. The reason why is uh, the first thing that happens when you mix these guys is gonna slow down this reaction. So this is what happens initially. You probably know this already. You should know it. What will happen when a mean is is uh, in, pr in the presence of a carboxylic acid? Acid based chemistry, right? And that's going to slow things down. The 
because we don't want this uh, acid to be deprotonated. We want it to be the electrophile. We want it to have a positive charge. Is it much of an electrophile now? Nah, it's got this negative charge feeding into it, making it less positive. We want the nitrogen to be a nucleophile and add to the carbonyl. Is it a nucleophile here? No, it doesn't have a lone pair. Uh, let's see how bad this is though. What's the equilibrium for this? The pKa of the acetic acid is about 5. The pKa of the ammonium is about 9. Is that a product favored reaction? Yeah, stronger acid. K equilibrium. 10 to the 9 minus 5, 10 to the 4. Pretty product favored. For every one of these, you got 10,000 of those. Luckily, 10,000 isn't a crazy number when we deal with the reactions we do. So in a reaction like this, we can have billions and billions of these molecules. So one out of 10,000, there's still a fair number around. And if you heat them up enough, occasionally, one of the amine, amines will collide with the carbonyl. Um, and remember, the amine is kind of like a, a medium, a medium base slash nucleophile. Remember how I said that? It's like a, it's not, it's, I wouldn't say it's like a very weak base on a very weak nucleophile. But I'm not, also not going to say it's a very strong nucleophile, strong base. It's kind of medium, medium. So uh, it can also add to the carbonyl. So if it gets lucky enough, and instead of colliding with the proton there, it comes in and it collides with the carbonyl carbon, it can do our addition. And this step looks a little weird, but we have to come up with some kind of mechanism because amides are made. We can purify them, purify them, and isolate them, purify them, get an MR IR, and they're definitely made. It might look a little strange because we've got a minus on the oxygen. Our OH, I'm not going to leave off this time. And our nitrogen has got a plus charge. So we've got like a plus and a minus on the same molecule. I attribute it to the nitrogen being nucleophilic enough for this to happen. Okay, so I got my addition and I need to do an elimination. At this point, oh, and I also have my, I went from trigonal planar to my tetrahedral intermediate. So I need to re trigonal planarize this carbon. I need to drop down my lone pairs. But at this point, the amine's a better leaving group than the oxygen, the OH, and I want the OH to leave. So what am I going to do? I'm going to deprotonate that one. What should be my base? I'd say another amine can come in and do it. So now that guy is not such a good leaving group. And I'm going to actually uh, push that over to this board. Okay. And then um, I also made this. Ammonium. All right, so I want to have the alcohol leave. How should I draw the mechanism? Should I have it be protonated to become a good leaving group first? Or should I have it leave and be protonated on the way off? Uh, I'll go with protonate on the way off. This reaction is kind of strange. It's not really acidic or basic because of the ammonium 
I mean, the ethyl amine is slightly basic and the carboxylic acid is slightly acidic. So I'm going to do this. We're going to drop down the lone pair from the O minus and then have it be protonated on the way off. This way it's not looking like, ooh, I'm making a uh, hydroxide as a leaving group. Molecule of this is my elimination step of the addition elimination, and I made my amine again, and I'm done, huh? I made my amine. Now remove this helps drive the whole reaction. All right, this is the last reaction of chapter 19. Uh, you'll notice chapter 19 went a little quicker than others, and uh, the other chapters 20, 21, 22, 23, I think some of them are a little bit longer, but most of them are pretty short. So don't feel like, oh, he's going to cram all these chapters in at the end of the semester. No, there's going to be a lot less reactions. And also, now that you're such better organic chemists, the reactions we do learn from those, you'll get quick. So the next one is a uh, lithium aluminum hydride acid reduction. So you already saw lithium aluminum hydride reduce ketones and aldehydes. It's also, it's very strong, right? We, we can reduce ketones and aldehydes. It can also do SN2 on like bromides. It can reduce uh, carboxylic acids as well. So let's look at that. Let's make up the carboxylic acid. Uh, I'll make up the, the smallest one this time. So it's at least a little different. So if we take carboxylic acid like this and we uh, treat it with lithium aluminum hydride, same way we did with ketones and aldehydes, we add the lithium aluminum hydride in diethyl ether or THF and then we do an acidic workup. What we wind up getting is our alcohol like that. The two carbons remain the same. And uh, this reaction is different than the ones we were doing before because when it starts, is this under acidic or basic conditions? So the, one, the first one we did, uh, we did the ester synthesis. The acid chloride and the ester synthesis, I would call them both acidic conditions. Then we did the amine and the carboxylic acid, kind of neutral conditions. And now with the lithium aluminum hydride at start, before we add the acid workup, this is under basic conditions. So, what does it mean when you're under basic conditions? That means you expect what kind of charged organic intermediates? Negative. All right, let's do this. So, for the mechanism. Start off with the carboxylic acid and the lithium aluminum hydride. And remember, the aluminum hydride is very reactive. The aluminum is not happy at all with its negative charge. It's like, I don't want a negative charge. It's a strong base, strong nucleophile. So what's it going to react as first? A base. If you have a strong base nucleophile and you have anything that's acidic, it's going to do the acid-base chemistry. Um, <clears throat> you can think of it as this way. When you do acid-base chemistry, when the hydride comes over and attacks that acidic hydrogen, that acidic hydrogen has an S orbital, spherical S orbital, so it can attack it from a lot of different angles. It's not restricted on where it attacks that spherical S orbital of the hydrogen. It's not restricted like, is, for example, when you do an SN2 reaction, remember you have that cone of reactivity, you have to come in the backside. Uh, also, when you attack a carbonyl, 
you, uh, it's believed you have to come from this side of it. You, it's, it's not as reactive this way, I think. So you have to come at this side, you gotta come at a certain angle. You gotta come at like to the board. You should attack at about 109 degrees. So it becomes the tetrahedral intermediate or from the other side of the board. So if it's gonna attack the carbonyl, it's gotta come specifically at it. But for the spherical S orbital of the hydrogen, you can come here, 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 all the way around the other side. So that's why we usually always see acid base reactions uh, before addition reactions or substitutions. So we got that step, and this step, I'm gonna draw a full arrow because it's not very reversible at all, this one. So why is it not very reversible? It makes hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas can bubble out of the solution, and if there's not much of it, it safely bubbles away. If there's a lot of it, it could uh, react with oxygen in the air and explode. Uh, so, you gotta be careful with it. Don't do the reaction on a very large scale. <clears throat> All right. <coughs> oh, is this step favorable? Let's see, pKa of the acid is about five. pKa of the Hydrogen, does anybody remember? I didn't have you memorize that one, but I said it. It's about 40. So is it favorable? Yeah, very favorable. K equilibrium is ten to the forty minus five, ten to the thirty-five. And then when this forms, it bubbles away too, so that's very favorable. Alright, now at this point is my aluminum happy. It lost its negative charge. Hey, aluminum, that nice, no more negative charge. Aren't you happy? I want an octet. It wants an octet. It doesn't have an octet. There's three hydrogens attached. So the uh, carboxylate can, it can coordinate with it in a classic like Lewis base, Lewis acid. And it does that. Um, should I use the O minus or the double bonded O? It actually does not matter because these are equivalent when you draw resonance in this case. I'll use the O minus for that reason. There we go. Okay, is this aluminum happy now? It had a negative charge? I don't want a negative charge. It had no octet. I want an octet. Has the octet again? Isn't it happy? No. I don't want a negative charge. So what does it do? It has to lose another hydride. So it's kind of weird, but it has to react at this point with either another carboxylic acid and deprotonate it, or it can add to a carbonyl of something, uh, but it's going to lose a hydride. So let's do it. This is one of those reactions, kind of bubbles along. All right, here we go. So aluminum, you happy? No more negative charge? I want an octet. But you know, it has something that kind of helps it. It's got a lone pair on the oxygen, which can double bond, give it a little bit of resonance to fill its oxygen. Okay, but what's going to happen though, I'll show you, because we haven't really made much progress to our alcohol yet, huh? But we'll get there. So this is the, uh, I'm going to go to the, go to other board now. Get up here. Okay. is this guy is set up to add another hydrogen to it finally. So I can use an aluminum hydride like this 
or these hydrogens can all be acetates too, as long as I have one hydride. So like this guy could be O acetate like that. All three can be that, or two, or one. Whatever runs into it. And then, uh, so it's gonna add to the carbonyl. Again, does this carbonyl, I mean, uh, not again, but when I do this, I'm making an O minus on that guy, right? Does that seem okay to do when we're in lithium aluminum hydride? Having an O minus? Yeah, it feels very, very good to have O minus in a basic solution like this. So I got my hydrogen on there, my aluminum. There it is. Uh, and now, I need to get, I need to get that guy off. Because I need another hydrogen to be added to this carbon. See how many hydrogens are on carbon one in the product? One, two, right? Started with none. And now carbon one has a single hydrogen and needs another one. So I could just go ahead and eliminate right now, bam, this guy. And the aluminum with the two hydrogens kind of likes that. Because when it has an O minus attached to it, it's not happy as not having an octet, so it can have resonance where it has an octet and a minus charge. It's not happy with a minus charge, but maybe it's happy being kind of, you know, a little bit of both. So it's like in between, I don't want a negative charge and I don't want an octet. Uh, I don't want a negative charge and the aluminum, I don't want a negative charge and I want an octet. Yeah. Okay. And now once I get to this point, it's the reaction we learned last semester, 12A. Another hydride source can come along, and I'll do this. I'll put R3. So the R3 could be acetates, or could be uh, something added to that too. All right, so now we can just add to this. Now we've got the two hydrogens on that carbon. And the aluminum, not happy with that, an octet, but whatever. Never happy. This can bond to that guy. And you can say, hey, are you happy now? You've got your octet filled again. No, I'm not happy. I got a negative charge. And, uh, but my, I can see my, my acid's been fully reduced. And this can stay in solution until you add your acid, your H3O plus workup. And I won't go through the full acid workup, but can you see something like this occurring? And whew, we got it. And then this uh, water can add to that, and blah, blah, blah. But we reduce the carboxylic acid all the way down to an alcohol. So let's give chapter 19 a proper send off. We'll do a, a nice retro here. Uh, let's look at this one. I've got this one propanol. Sodium cyanide, we saw what we can do with that. We can make cyanide into, sodium cyanide into nitrile, which you can hydrate to a carboxylic acid. And we have an ester here, and this ester is one, two, three, four carbons here, and one, two, three there. So that looks like that one. I think you could see what's going on now. Let's do this, let's go retro. Retro for this one. I'll start by saying um, there's a number of ways to do this actually. 
I can say, oh, this comes from the carboxylic acid and the alcohol. Or I could say, oh, this comes from the acid chloride and the alcohol. Or I could say it comes from the anhydride and the alcohol. All are fine. You can do any of them. Um, just randomly pick one. Which one do you want to do? Middle one? Okay. Uh, I would say for you guys, it'd be good for you to do yo the other ones. Do yo. Uh, I think this one is the shortest, though, huh? But I'll do this one, it's a little longer, <clears throat> but that's all right. So uh, for this, I'll say the alcohol, I'm done. The acid, uh, the acid chloride, though, has to come from carboxylic acid and thionyl chloride. And the carboxylic acid can come from One, two, three, yeah, here's that, good. Yep. The nitrile, we can hydrate a nitrile. One, two, three, four. And the nitrile can come from bromide, sodium cyanide, and the bromide can come from the alcohol. All right, let's do the synthesis. Yeah, I guess I'll start from the alcohol. To the, to the bromide, um, I can use HBr or PBr3. I'll go with PBr3, just no good reason really, just to do it. And that makes my bromide, my three carbon bromide, which then I treat with sodium cyanide and say, uh, I'll use HMPA, another polar aprotic solvent. We haven't seen that one in a while. It's aprotic because the nitrogens have methyls on them instead of hydrogens. So hexamethyl, one, two, three, four, five, six, hexamethyl phosphorus triamine. No, Phos hexamethyl phosphorus triamine? Yeah, that's it. All right, so I make my cyanide. And I just added my fourth carbon. One, two, three, four. So I was at uh, one, two, three before. The numbers don't match, whatever. All right, so how do I make this into the carboxylic acid? Just add some water, some acid, heat it up. That was a nice mechanism. That would be a good mechanism to put on exam three, I think. And then uh, this, I could just add the alcohol and acid and heat it up. But I decided to go with the thionyl chloride method, so let's do it. SOCl2, methylene chloride. There we go, we got our acid chloride, which then you just add your, since it's such a strong electrophile, You can just add your alcohol, and uh, if you don't add a base, you can get HCl as bubble away. 